Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, church. Amen. It is good to see you all back here again. And let us all stand as we sing our first song, hymnal number 125, Wonderful Peace. Hymnal number 125, Wonderful Peace. We will be singing two stanzas, the first and the second. Say amen if you are there. Amen. On the first stanza, ready, sing. Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight Rolls a melody sweeter than song In celestial like streams it unceasingly falls For my soul like an infinite bond
at pagpalain din po ninyo, Panginoon, ang awitin ng aming choir at ang pangalan lamang po ninyo, ang pupurihan. Itong aming samot na langin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. You may all be seated as we listen to the choir. Gather with the saints at the river. 
worship to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and it's still we're celebrating Mother's Day okay so uh, if you're a mother and you were not here this uh, this morning you would like, can you please stand up so that we can recognize you if you are a mother and you were not here this morning we would like to give you something a token of our appreciation to all the mothers kung kayo po ay nanay at wala kayo kanina umaga sister Dali yan okay and you please stand up yan let's give her a big hand meron pa po ba? Meron pa po ba? You're a mom and you were not here this morning. Meron pa po? Meron pa po? Okay. And you know, mothers are like banks. Um, um, they find ways. Okay? And uh, you are secured. And also, they are like a mall. They got it all and they are happy to serve. <laughs> okay? So we appreciate all our mothers. Uh, who are present with us this morning. We have, I think, 80 plus mothers this morning. So we praise the Lord for that. Also, it's good to see our missionary Min here. Hi. Yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, just me just remind you of some things. Don't forget our Wednesday prayer meeting. Uh, this is the time that we pray for one another, 7 o'clock po. And you can also live it, li uh, watch, watch it live on our uh, Facebook page. And if you have some prayer requests, may din po kayong tumawag anytime sa church so that we can include it in our list. Okay? Appreciate the, the blessings. The Lord has answered prayers. And those still we are uh, praying, the Lord will answer them in His time. Okay? Then also, yung pong uh, this coming Saturday, medical ministry po natin. So be here if you'd like to volunteer for that. Uh, be, be, be here by 7 o'clock. Okay? And uh, also other ministries po, extension classes, and also our visitation, and uh, yung mga uh, soul winning uh, uh, ministry po natin dito sa church. So please don't forget to uh, join, if you like to volunteer, to join those ministries. Okay? And also, as I have mentioned this morning, we are praying for the Arma family. They will be arriving here in the Philippines, Lord willing, by the last week of uh, this month. So again, meron po tayong tatlong bagay na dapat nating uh, ihanda para kanilang sa kanilang pagdating. Uh, three things that we have to do to, uh, to prepare for as they come. Number one po, let's pray for them. Uh, siyempre, uh, for safe journey. And then, pagdating po nila dito, we praise the Lord na meron na silang place to stay. Ang ating panalangin, uh, if you would like to help them sa kanilang mga pang-araw-araw na pangangailangan sa kanilang katulad no, siyempre, pag nagbiyahe, dala-dala lang nila, luggage lang nila. So, they need something para sa kanilang beddings, uh, pillows and everything sa uh, kailangan nila sa kanilang uh, pagluluto yung mga utensils na gagamitin at uh, yung pang-araw-araw sa dining, sa living room at saka sa uh, bedroom, bedroom. Lahat po nang gagamitin doon. If you would like to uh, give something uh, to uh, for them to be able to use for the six months na nandito po sila, you can bring it here in church at least po hanggang Sunday. So that they will be ready and we can be able to prepare the place para naka-ready na. Second, meron po tayo dyang box sa likod. Nandun sa baba, nakalagay doon yung white box, Arma, Felix Arma and Family. So syempre, meron na silang mga gamit. So kinakailangan naman nila yung mga pang-araw-araw nilang gagamitin nila oh, for the sustenance. So yung mga pang-grocery items, both personal and everything, hygienic, lahat po na kailangan po nila as yung mga nanay na nag-grow grocery. Yan, pwede po natin isipin ano yung mga kailangan nila so that pagdating nila doon, uy, may kapi na, uy, may gatas na, and everything is prepared. Okay? And then third, 
uh, sa pagdating po natin sa lang, we'll give them a warm welcome. We'll welcome them. After six years po, nandito sila. So, may, may sign-up sheet sa labas. Uh, you can put down, write down your name. And then, yung dadalhin natin, we'll be having a fellowship right after our evening service. Doon po sa May 28 po. And then, right after the service, we're going to have a, a welcome party for them. And then, you can bring the simple foods. Mga ginagamit natin mga sa Pilipino. Mga pansit, uh, pandisal, or whatever, barbecue, o kung ano man. Uh, makakanin, uh, weak fruits na magagamit natin during the fellowship time. So, that will be right after our uh, service dun po sa May 28. So, tatlong bagay po lang yan. Okay, so let's pray and let the Lord burden you to give, to be able to, tell, to show our love and concern for our missionary to Ghana. Okay? And speaking of missionary, we praise the Lord for your faithfulness and giving to our uh, uh, to our uh, missions giving. Uh, we praise the Lord for uh, 70,000 per week. That our goal and then for giving to the Lord, our missionary for this afternoon is missionary John Hernan. Uh, so we continue to pray according to the bulletin, yung report nila. So God has already put some things na madali nilang as they travel along and share the gospel. So we praise the Lord for that. So let's continue to pray for them and also for our other missionaries that we are supporting. Okay? So that's all for our announcement. Meron pa ba? If somebody lost this pearls po, meron siyang USB at saka connector. Okay? So it was uh, found last week. So kung sa inyo po to, please get it in the office. Okay? So do you have anyone visiting with us for the very first time? This is your first time to be at Baptist Bible Church. Meron po ba? Meron po ba? Is this your first time to be at Baptist Bible Church? Yan. Okay. So let's all please stand up and let's sing our welcome song. Let us go around, shake hands with smiles on our faces as we sing our welcome song. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian As the ushers come up, let us call on Brother Rafi. Let's go into the Lord in prayer. Uh, Mighty Father, we praise and thank you once again, O oh God, uh, for bringing us back this afternoon for our afternoon service, O oh Lord. And as we continue our service, O oh God, through our giving, O oh God, we, um, we thank you as this is a privilege, O oh God, for us to be able to give, O oh God. You have enabled us, O oh God, to give. That's why we are giving back, O oh Lord. Um, the resources, O oh Lord, and I pray um, for um, the hearts of those givers, O oh God, that these gifts may be used, O oh Lord, for the furtherance of your gospel, in, uh, may be used, O oh God, for the expenses of this church, O oh God, and also in supporting our missionaries, O oh Lord. This all I ask Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may all be seated as we listen to the special number.
when the day is done for he has written me and called me his own and made me a name to my father's throne the precious and Such a wonderful song.
it's the gospel in a song. And then, don't you know what? Thinking about it, uh, don't you know that the song of redemption will be our theme throughout all eternity? If you would read in the book of Revelation, there are two songs, the song of creation and the song of redemption. And in the song of redemption, we will be saying that he, the Lord is worthy because he, has, he was slain and he has redeemed people from uh, out of every tongue and in every kindred and every nation. Yan po, ga, yan po ka, gaano ka importante ang gospel that even all throughout eternity, that will be our theme. And it should be also in every uh, services that we will have here and every ministry that we have. So, happy Mother's Day po sa lahat ng mga nanay ngayon na nandito po. And uh, we have heard our speaker speak for us uh, this morning. And he is a son of a veteran missionary, Mike Misland, who had served as a missionary down there in Zambales and also there in Baguio. And his wife, Sister Annika, uh, is the daughter of uh, Dr. Ed Laurena. So let's welcome to the pulpit our speaker, none other than missionary Jonathan Mislan. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. It's good to be back uh, in the Lord's house with you for our afternoon service. And uh, many of us had a great lunch. And uh, so no sleeping. Amen. And uh, I know it's easy to fall asleep after a good meal in an afternoon service like this. But uh, kaya dili po ako badugay dugay, amen. In Cebuano, that means I won't be too long uh, tonight. Well, open your Bibles, if you will, to Philippians in the New Testament, Philippians chapter two, Philippians chapter two, and we'll give a moment for everybody to turn on over there, Philippians chapter two. By the way, this morning, Brother Anon gave me this quote. I've heard it before on Mother's Day, but. Uh, I think it's a good quote. The rock, or the the uh, hand that rocks the cradle, rocks the world. Amen. And so we appreciate lahat po ng ating mga mothers. Amen. And this morning our title uh, was magnificent mothers. Uh, this afternoon our title is the perfect son. Amen. Alam po natin walang perfectong anak, but there was one who was the perfect son. And his name, of course, is Jesus Christ. So Philippians chapter 2, and let's all stand for a moment to give reverence to God's word. Gawin po natin responsive reading. So I'll read verse 5, and then you read verse 6. I'll read verse 7 until we get down to verse 11. Kung saan po, sabay-sabay tayo magbasa. All right, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Uh, the Bible says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. All, all together on verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, as we come before you this afternoon, we thank you for these, your children, na tapat po sa bahay sambahan on this uh, Sunday afternoon service. And we pray you'd bless as we dig into your word for the next few moments together. Uh, create in our hearts a great thankfulness for the Savior. Lord, we ask you these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. All right. Well, as I mentioned, our title this afternoon is The Perfect Son. The Perfect Son. And from Philippians chapter 2, we will look at seven attributes, seven attributes of the perfect Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, all the Old Testament points to Christ, and he is the hero of the scriptures. And we're going to see seven wonders of the perfect Son of God. Now, maybe you've heard before of the seven wonders of the world. Amen. And na po yung Great Wall of China. 
uh, the pyramids, the Pasig River. No, no, I'm just kidding. That one is not included. But the seven wonders, there's also the seven wonders of the Philippines. Uh, wondrous things. Also, our hus as husbands, our wife is our wonder woman. Amen? Bakit po? Because I wonder what happened to the budget. I wonder bakit ako yung naglalaba. Amen? I wonder so many things. But today, we will look at the wonders of the Lord Jesus Christ here from our text, Philippians chapter 2. Now, of all the people who ever lived on planet Earth, none comes even close to having the impact upon human history that Jesus Christ has had. This one person has attracted a greater combination of attention, devotion, criticism, adoration, and opposition than any other person. The recorded words of Jesus have been sifted, analyzed, criticized, and studied. This Jesus of Nazareth has divided the centuries. Hati po ang ating panahon in the world by B.C., and A.D. Amen? B.C. means before Christ. Hindi po before COVID, ah? Uh, before Christ. And Jesus Christ of Nazareth uh, has made an impact on this world. More books have been written about Jesus than any other person in history. He never raised an army, and yet millions of people have laid down their lives for him in the mission work. He never traveled far from Israel, but his gospel has now traveled around the entire world. His earthly ministry lasted only three years, yet now his ministry has spanned the centuries through the gospel. He never raised, uh, had a degree from Ateneo or La Salle, but thousands of universities and colleges have been built now in his name. And that is the Lord we're going to look at today. So we're going to see seven wonders, okay, of the perfect son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Pito po ito, ano? So mas mapapabilis tayo kapag tig isa ay merong amen. Amen? So number one, Jesus is the supernatural son of God. He's the supernatural son of God. Look back, if you will, to verse 6. Look at verse 6 and 7 with me. The Bible says, uh, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Okay, so what we're talking about here is the supernatural birth of Jesus Christ. The supernatural nature ng Panginoon. Supernatural means higit sa kariniwan. Okay, ang Diyos ay nagkatawang tao and was made in the likeness of men. This is the miracle of the virgin birth. Now, 700 years prior, it was prophesied that our Savior would come from a virgin. Uh, we know the prophecy that tells us uh, a virgin shall conceive. You shall behold a sign, and behold, a virgin shall conceive. Now, there are about 365 prophecies of the Messiah that are fulfilled directly in Jesus' life. Okay? Now, those who study math say that this is statistically impossible. Na by chance. How many of you have studied, you like the course math? In college, amen? Math. I'm good at math. You know why? Ano spelling ng math? M-A-T-H. Mirienda, almusal, tanghalian, hapunan. Amen? Some of you are great in math. Amen? But those who study statistics say that it is impossible that he would have fulfilled all this with his life. Now, si Maria mismo ay hindi makapaniwala na nangyayari ito. She said, how can this happen? And the angel said, with man it is impossible, but with God nothing shall be impossible. So his birth was supernatural. Now Jesus could not have come from the line of Joseph. We know if he was born of Joseph, he would have had a sinful blood and he would be a sinner just like all of us. And so he had to come from a pure line. That's why Jesus had to be born of a virgin. If you doubt the virgin birth, birth marami kang magiging problema. You're going to have a lot of problems. Number one, you're going to have a problem with the Word of God because you're saying the Word of God is not true. Number two, you're going to have a problem with the character of Mary because you're saying si Maria ay nabuntis ng hindi kasal. Number three, you're going to have a problem with the character of Jesus because you're saying Jesus... Uh, was isalang pong anak sa labas, an illegitimate child. 
Uh, but your biggest problem will be with yourself because if, if there is no virgin birth, then there is no Savior and you don't have a chance to go to heaven. But I'm glad I believe in the supernatural virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Now people will say, I'm not sure if I can believe in the virgin birth of Christ. Yet they believe in uh, spirits. They believe in multo. They believe in aswang. They believe in uh, okay? And yes, there are evil spirits, but if we believe in evil spirits, we can believe in the Holy Spirit, amen? And the Holy Spirit conceived the Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, Jesus had to become one of us to save us. Now, a good way to illustrate this is, have you been asked about your family ancestry? Amen? Nasubukan niyo na bang matanong about your family ancestry? Maybe... They will say, where are you from? Maybe you'll say, my mother is from Cebu. My father is from Ilocos. Amen. Uh, like the one, they said, my mother is Aita. And my father is Bicolano. So what are you? Italiano. Amen. <laughs> Italiano. But what if Jesus was asked that line of questioning? Well, we know they had a question answer time in Luke chapter 2. Verse 45, where it says, They found him in the temple in the midst of the teachers, both hearing them and asking them questions, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. No, say Jesus, say 12 years old, we understand uh, he was lost. Okay, and uh, where did his parents find them? In the church. Amen. Today in the Philippines, pag nawala yung young people sa bahay, saan nakikita? Sa computer shop, right? Or some mall, amen? But Jesus was found in the church and they're having a dialogue with the teachers and maybe a bit like this uh, went some of the questions. Baka tinanong siya, Bata, anong pangalan mo? He may have answered on my mother's side, my name is Jesus. But on my father's side, my name is Jehovah. Batang Jesus, taga saan ka? Well, on my mother's side, I'm from Bethlehem. But on my father's side, I come from the portals of heaven. Batang Jesus, ilang taong ka na ba? Well, on my mother's side, I'm 12 years old. But on my father's side, I am from everlasting to everlasting. Batang Jesus, anong reliyon mo? Well, on my mother's side, ako po isang hudyo from the line of Abraham. But on my mother's side, before our father's side, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus, anong plano mo sa buhay? Well, on my mother's side, pupunta po ako sa cross at mamamatay doon. But on my father's side, uh, I will rise again. Batang Jesus, paano ba to na mas alam mo yung Bible kaysa sa aming mga Bible scholars? At baka sinagot po doon, well, ganito yan, on my mother's side, she reads me the Bible, the Old Testament every night, but on my father's side, bef uh, my father's side, ako ang nagsulat ng lahat ng yan. Amen? Why? Because he was the supernatural, the supernatural son of God. And secondly, number two na po, okay, he was the sinless son of God. The sinless son of God. He's the only one to ever live without sin. Look at uh, verse 8 of our text, Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Perfect obedience. Only Jesus Christ was ever the one to achieve perfect obedience. Obedience. You see, to be our Savior, He had to be uh, sinless. He had to live a life of perfect obedience. Now, if we get excited about any other subject more than Jesus Christ, meron pong mali sa puso natin. Amen? If we get excited about things more than Jesus Christ, we have a problem. If we get excited more about the Lakers winning, uh, the NBA, then we do about Jesus Christ, we have a problem. Pag pinag-uusapan ang Panginoon at nakasimangot tayo, we have a problem. If we're in the house of God and we're exalting the Lord Jesus Christ and He is first in our hearts, then nothing else matters than lifting Him up. And we rejoice in the fact that He was the sinless Son of God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 tells us, He was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Jesus won the battle over Satan and he never sinned publicly. He was asked, uh, and he asked, he said, Which of you convicteth me of sin? 
Sinong na makakapagbintang sa akin ng anuman kasalanan? And Jesus asked the question and no one could accuse him. Even Pilate, we know, naghugas po siya ng kamay and he said, I find no fault in him because he was the sinless son of God. Amen? Number three na po, kung merong amen. 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 Okay? Number three, inaantok na po yung iba. Amen? Number three, he is the sovereign son of God. The sovereign son of God. Look at verse 6. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Ibig sabihin po, walang masama, walang pagnanakaw sa glory ng Panginoon na sabihin niya, equal siya with God the Father. Because he was equal with God the Father. He is not only Jesus the Son of God, but he is Jesus the God the Son. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8. I want you to see this verse. This is a fascinating verse. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8. Kung saan ang nagsasalita ay yung Diyos Ama sa Diyos Anak. And it says in verse 8, But unto the Son he saith, So the Father says to the Son, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. So sabi mismo ng Diyos Ama na ang Diyos Anak ay dutoong Diyos. That's why if there's any group that denies the deity of Christ, that is a cult and that is an antichrist. The Bible warns us of that. So we don't mean to be ugly in spirit, but yung Iglesia ni Cristo, of course they are denying the real Jesus. All groups who deny that He was God deny the Father and deny the Son. And so, he, we see that He is the sovereign Son of God. Kaya po, we cannot forget that He is the sovereign Son of God. 1 John 2 verse 22 says, Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Sabi ng Diyos, if you deny the Son is God, you deny also the Father. Now, look at this in John chapter 8. Many of us know this, but it's a rich uh, text. John chapter 8, verse 56 through 59. We'll look at it quickly here. But we see here that Jesus clearly claimed to be God. Jesus clearly claimed to be God. And we know that because the reaction of the Jewish people was to take up stones to stone him because they knew what he was claiming. Here in John chapter 8, verse 56, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto them, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. You see, they knew clearly he was claiming to be God. And in the passage, he says, before Abraham was, I am. He doesn't say, before Abraham was, I was. He says, before Abraham was, I am. Now, he says, yung ninuno nyo, si Abraham, tuwang tuwa, when he saw me in my glory. And they said, how have you seen Abraham? Wala ka pang 50 años. And he answers them that before Abraham was, I am. We know I am is the name of God in the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. You see, sa Egypt, ang daming Diyos Diyosan. Parang Filipinas, ang daming ribulto Diyos Diyosan at that time in Egypt. And there were so many gods that Moses grew up seeing. Isis, Osiris, the god of the Nile. And he says, what should I tell them your name is? And God says, tell them I am. Because God cannot point down to anything or anyone in this universe and say, I am like that. Or I am like him. And so he says, I am that I am. And Jesus seized upon the name of God and says, before Abraham was, I am. So what we see is that he is the sovereign son of God. And that's why we cannot make a statue or an ornament or decoration about Jesus. He is the all-sovereign son of God. In fact, he told Philip, 
If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So, kumbaga nakatingin siya kay Philip at sabi ng Panginoon, kung nakatingin ka na sa akin, nakatingin ka na sa Diyos. That's how powerful Jesus was. He was the sovereign Son of God. So, He was the supernatural Son of God. He was the sinless Son of God. He was the sovereign Son of God. Pang-apat na po kung may amen. Amen. He was the sacrificial Son of God. The sacrificial Son of God. Look at verse 8. Again, Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. In our text, the Bible says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, ito po yung misunderstanding ng marami, nating kababayan, but listen, the sacrifice of Christ on the cross is not an example to be copied like what happens in penitentia time. It is a substitutionary payment to be received, to be accepted. You see, Jesus' death on the cross was not incidental or accidental. Hindi po siya namatay doon bilang biktima. He did not die bilang martyr. He died as a savior taking our sins upon him. The Bible says it was all part of the heart and plan of God to save us. John chapter 10, verse 18, he said, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. So he was the supernatural Son of God, upang mapanganak siyang the sinless Son of God, because he was the sovereign Son of God, all for the purpose of, so that he could be the sacrificial son of God. Amen? It had to be so that he could take our sins away. Okay? Now, the blood on the cross was not the blood of sinful man. It was not a sinful blood, but the blood on the cross was the very blood of God. Amen? You, you, you don't believe me? Look at Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Yun po ay dugo ng Diyos. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. The Bible says, Take heed. Uh, sa mga pastor in Ephesus, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. What does it say? Which he hath purchased with his own blood. Amen? Who is the pronoun? He. Who is it addressing? God. God is the subject. He is the pronoun. So the blood on the cross was the blood of God. It was not the blood of Mary, okay? It was the sinless blood. Now, those who study blood types, amen? Somebody asked me, preacher, what's your blood type? Blood type C ako, copy, amen? <laughs> Actually, B, barako, amen? But those who study blood types will tell you that it is possible for the mother of an unborn child to have a totally different blood type than her child. Bakit? Because it's the father who determines the blood type. That's why in the States, they have paternity tests, right? Para malaman kung sino talaga yung tatay. So, the blood of Jesus was determined not by Mary, but he was conceived of the Holy Ghost, and so it was a sinless blood. It was a sovereign blood. It was a sacrificial blood. It was a blood powerful enough to wash all our sins away. Amen? That's the blood of Jesus Christ. And we rejoice in His salvation. So, He is the supernatural Son of God. The sinless Son of God. The sovereign Son of God. The sacrificial Son of God. Pang lima na po kung may amen. Amen. He is the surviving Son of God. Amen? He's the surviving Son of God. Now look at verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. So we know He died on the cross in verse 8. Now verse 9. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted Him and given Him a name which is above every name. So, paano nangyari yun? He was obedient to death. So He died. And now he is exalted again. It's because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, on the cross, isinigaw po niya doon, it is finished. Amen? Ang pagkakamali, ang dinig ng iba, they thought he was saying that he was finished. But he was not finished. Amen? For in three days, he would rise again. You see, they accused him 
of, uh, of, of an untruth. They put him on the cross of Calvary. They crucified him and they put him in the grave. They put a rock that weighed 2,000 kilos and they gave a battalion of soldiers and said, make it as sure as you can. But on the third day, nothing could stop the surviving power of Jesus Christ. Amen. And up from the grave, he arose with a mighty victory over his foes. It's been said the Pharisees couldn't stop him. Pilate could not accuse him. The cross could not defeat him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave could not hold him because he is the ever-living, ever-surviving Son of God. So we're talking about today the perfect Son, and Jesus Christ is the one and only perfect Son of God, and he is the surviving Son of God. Now, there are others that Christ raised from the dead, uh, like Lazarus and others. Christ raised them, but uh, you're going to see how Jesus differs from them all. You see, Lazarus, actually, see, Lazarus, baka nagalit pa si Lazarus. Imagine, Lazarus was raised from the dead, and uh, he was already, right? He was already in, a, in a Abraham's bosom there, and then pinabalik. Because to strengthen the faith of his sisters, of his siblings. You know, if I was Abraham, I would not be too happy about that. Isipin nyo, tumanda pa tuloy siya. Baka nirayuma pa siya. Baka nagka-diabetes pa siya. If he's Filipino, nagka-gout pa siya. Amen? And, and he was already in heaven. And he had to come back to die twice. Duble po ang gastos niya sa burol. Can you imagine? But the difference with Jesus is, when he rose, he will never die again. Amen? He ever lives to make intercession for us, the Bible says. In Hebrews 7 verse 25. Now there are other spiritual and religious leaders that have died and are all still dead. You can visit their graves. Confucius is still there. You can visit the grave of Buddha. He is still there. You can visit the grave of Muhammad. He is still there. You can visit the grave of Felix Manalo. And he is still there. But you can also visit the grave of Jesus Christ. And he is no longer there. Amen. For he is living as he said. So without a doubt, Jesus is alive. Now listen to this from the historians. Many of them say that there is more evidence that Jesus Christ rose from the dead than there is evidence that Julius Caesar ever lived. There's so much evidence. Uh, the death and resurrection of Christ is one of the most well-attested and well-documented events in all human history. There is so much evidence for the fact that he is alive. There is the evidence... Uh, of the expectation of the event. There is the evidence of the early accounts. There is the evidence of the eyewitness accounts. There is the evidence of extra biblical accounts. There is the ev evidence of the enemy's accounts, of the empty tomb, of the entire changed lives of the disciples. There is the evidence of the explosive growth of the church. There is so much evidence for the fact that Jesus is alive. Amen. And I love the song that says, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. Kaya kung buhay ang Panginoon sa buhay nyo, would you say an amen? Amen. amen. He is alive. And so, number six is he is the soon coming Son of God. He is the soon coming Son of God. Look quickly in verse 9. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 where it references some things that will happen at the second coming of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, the first time Jesus came with a cross, for the cross. The second time, he will come with a crown. He will come with a crown. Pagbalik po ng Panginoon at the second coming, all knees will bow to Jesus Christ. Amen? All knees will bow to Jesus Christ. On that day, presidents and world rulers will bow. No one will be exempt from the lordship of Jesus Christ. The president of the United States will bow to Jesus Christ. 
the president of China, president of Russia, leader of the UN, whoever it is, they will bow to Jesus Christ. Mr. Kibaloi will bow to Jesus Christ. Amen? Mr. Vice Ganda will bow to Jesus Christ. All living will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. But the good news is we do not have to wait for that event. We can bow and confess the Lord Jesus Christ even now. Amen? And we can say that He is Lord. He is Lord in our lives. And I believe at that moment even Satan himself will be humbled. And he will bow and confess, Jesus is Lord. Amen. So, he is the supernatural Son of God. He is the sinless Son of God. He is the sovereign Son of God. He's the sacrificial Son of God. He's the surviving Son of God. He's the soon coming Son of God. And if you're ready for the last one, would you say amen? Amen. amen. He is the saving Son of God. Amen. I save the best for last. He is the saving Son of God. The purpose of our text here in, in Philippians chapter 2 and really the purpose of the entire scripture, these things have I written unto you that you may know that you have everlasting life. The Bible says this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Jesus is the exalted Savior. We saw that in, in, in Philippians 2. He is the enduring Savior, and He is the exclusive Savior. Amen? There is no other Savior. Look at Acts chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. It's only the name of Jesus. Look at John 14, 6. We know this scripture well. It says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In fact, let's back up verse 6. Let's read it all together tonight. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see, the way to heaven. Jesus said he was going back. His disciples said, Lord, we don't know the way. The way... Jesus said, I am the way. Amen? The way to heaven is not in a church. The way to heaven is not in baptism or moral teachings. The way to heaven is not empty spirituality or dead religion. The way to heaven is a person, and the person is Jesus Christ. Jesus is not a good way to heaven or the best way. He is the only way. To heaven he is the saving son of God now have you heard some of the quotes of religious leaders before they die some of the famous last quotes well John 14 is uh, the farewell address some of the farewell statements of Christ but here are some of other religious leaders uh, famous recorded last word Muhammad said I do not know the purpose of life that's Muhammad of, of Islam I do not know the purpose of life Buddha said seek for the truth. Last words. Confucius said, I am not the way. Kasi confused pa siya, amen? Confucius eh. So, Muhammad is confused about life. Buddha was confused about the truth. And Confucius was confused about the way. The way, the truth, the life. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? It is all in Jesus Christ. He's the saving Son of God. And if you are here tonight and you're not sure or you're watching by live stream or this message comes out to you somewhere down the line, if you're not sure that heaven is your home, you can be assured because he is the saving son of God. He said that whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You need to repent of your sin, call on Christ to save you, realize you're a sinner, and he assures us of uh, salvation through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Listen, walang tao na hindi niya kayang iligtas and walang tao na ayaw niyang iligtas. We have to refute this idea that is resurging today of this reform doctrine that says only some people are chosen to heaven. Let me tell you, that is a lie. Amen? That is a lie. The Bible says 
God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Ang nais ng Diyos, He's the saving Son of God. He wants to save everyone, or He wants to save whosoever will, that will come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, friend, being religious will not save you. Being uh, baptized will not save you. Pagkanta ng nubina will not save you. Uh, pagbasa ng pasyon will not save you. They said pagbasa ng pasyon, but they don't read it. They sing it. Right? They sing, Nang si Judas ay nadulas, ngipin niya ay nalagas. Amen. Parang nakakasar na eh, di ba? <clears throat> but those religious activities will not save you. The only one who will save you is Jesus Christ. So He is the supernatural Son of God. By way of recap tonight, He is the sinless Son of God. He is the sovereign Son of God, the sacrificial Son of God, the surviving Son of God, the soon coming Son of God, and He is the saving Son of God. He's the perfect Son. Now, seven wonders of the saving Son of God. The question is, how is your service for the Lord? I think of the song we sing, I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus, who died for me on Calvary? How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chain that I've helped to free? I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me? We have a wonderful Savior, so we must receive him. We must thank him. And I love the song that was sung earlier that said, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Amen. I hope that's what we did tonight and we can do tonight in our next few moments together to turn our eyes upon Jesus, to look away from personalities and problems and to see the person of Jesus Christ. And so receive him. But I believe if not everyone here, most everyone here has received Jesus Christ. But here's the challenge tonight is to thank him, to thank him. To bow. Now we read the scripture there where it says, Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. I believe po, hindi, our worship is not complete. Amen. If, if at some point during the service we do not bow before the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, thank you for the salvation that you have given me. You know, what a blessing. Today, souls have been saved. Amen. As they were here and they came forward and, and the visitors were dealt with, souls were saved. We should never get used to, we should never uh, get over the wonder of our salvation. We should always have a heart that says, thank you, Lord, for saving me. So that's the challenge tonight. Let's pray. And dear Lord, Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, we thank you for the saving wonder of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for our mothers, and uh, in doing that, we're challenged to be good sons, good daughters. And we know there are pressures that come along with that. But in that, we lay it all at the feet of Jesus because you were the perfect Son of God. Seven wonders, seven perfections of the Son of God. Lord, we trust in you and in you alone for salvation. We pray that you would deal with our hearts in our next few moments of invitation, Lord. Make it a time of thanksgiving where we simply come and bow and say, Lord, thank you. I never want to get over the beauty of Jesus Christ. I thank you for the salvation that you have given me. Lord, we pray you'd bless our next few moments now. We ask you these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's all stand. Let's have heads bowed and eyes closed as the instruments uh, begin to pray. Let's come forward. The altar is open tonight. It, ang challenge ngayon is simply pasasalamat. Would you come forward, join me at this altar just to bow and say, Lord, I bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. Some have come. Nandito na po sa altar. Would you join and say, Lord, I want to bow. I want to do the scripture. It says, every knee shall bow. Amen. We thank you for these that are here. Would you come and say, Lord, thank you 
Ako po ay nagpapasalamat para sa ginawa niyo sa akin sa cross ng Kalbaryo. Ayoko maging kampante, ayoko maging uh, sanay. I want to always be thankful for your salvation. Praise the Lord for those that are here. Hali, halika na po. We have room at the altar for you. A place. Amen. As many are coming now, we have room at the, at the altar for you. There is power in thanksgiving. Amen. As napupuno yung altar, come on, there's room for you. Do not delay. Come bow before the Lord. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Ito po ang lugar ng pagpapasalamat. The altar is a place to lay your burdens. But also, it's a place to say thank you. So say, Lord, I offer you the worship of thanksgiving. And so let's take a moment to reflect on what He has done for us. To say, Lord, thank you that I get to live a saved life, a serving life, and a sanctified life. Also, if you're here and you want to know, you want to know how heaven can be your home. Brother Dan is up front and others that would love to take a moment, open the Bible, show you how you can be assured of salvation, how you can receive the saving Son of God. Amen. Lord, as we come before you, what a joy it has been to be in your house all day. And we believe we have worship. What a joy to worship you in song, to worship you through our giving, to worship you through the word, and then to worship you in bowing our hearts to say thank you for your salvation. You are the perfect son. And help us, Lord, to go on in gratitude, living in the light of your freedom, as we have sung, to live every day turning our eyes upon Jesus, to be doing what the book of Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so, Lord, we pray that uh, you'd bless now as we come to the end of our service and we enter into the work week. Be with each one. Give them a special blessing for being faithful into your house and help us to still take opportunity to thank our mothers and uh, to reach out to them today. Lord, we ask you these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And all God's people said, yeah. Amen. Before you come down, may I, uh, please don't come down first. May I, you may please take your seat and may I ask Sister Annika to please come up the stage as our church would show our appreciation for you. Okay, so Sister Annika and also J Jason, am I correct? Uh, Jason, now please come as, uh, as our church would show our appreciation for you. So we have a gift for you. Okay, so... Brother Dan and uh, Brother Dan is going to bring it to you and thank you for preaching for us. Amen. Let's give them a big hand. Okay, thank you once again and we're happy to have Missionary Meme here and even as we dismiss, may I ask uh, Missionary Meme to please come and dismiss us in prayer. Shall we all stand up as we dismiss the prayer? Let's pray. Father, truly, we have heard the wonderful message. We are so excited for a moment that we will see in the glory. And I pray that, Lord, that you use this pulpit again to revive us, to excite it, to serve you more. And I also, I do pray that the name of Jesus Christ will be always glorified in this pulpit. I pray that you also bless the guest speaker, Pastor uh, Miss Land, that you would use him more, but also that bless every members here, and even us, that we will get excited to go back to the mission field, 
and continue to share the gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I pray that you will bless everyone as they go back home. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.